this is my long range marker float kit. In fact, it's my marker float kit for everywhere. I can cast this, well, I've had some cast intuition recently and I can get this 170 yards. Um, and we we'll talk about casting techniques in a minute. But first of all, the rod, this is a Longbow DF spod and marker. So it's the sort of softer of the two. There's a spod rod as well, which is even stiffer, but this still is very, very stiff. And that's important with a marker rod, that it's very stiff. One, it'll cast a long way. And two, when you're dragging the lead back along the bottom, the stiffer the rod, the more vibrations you feel. So as you can see, they're built like a normal longbow fishing rod. So very, very sexy build on it. Very minimal, 50 mil butt ring, going up to a 40, 30, 20, 16, and a 16 mil tip ring. So the line absolutely flies off of there. That's really important. And also a really long handle, that's really important for leverages, getting the rod tip moving quickly. There's nothing worse than having a marker rod that's too soft and it's got too short a handle, too small eyes, and you can't get the marker float any distance. And then moving down onto the reel, a bit extravagant really for a marker reel, but the important thing about this, it's the same reel as the fishing reel. So if I'm counting the number of turns to a spot, it's going to say it's 105 turns of this, it's 105 turns of the fishing reel as well. And that's something I use in my fishing a lot. If I find a good area, then I'll count the number of turns, write it down in my Blackberry and keep it forever. So I know if I go back in the same swim, casting at the same far bank marker, 105 turns, I'm back on the money again. That's loaded up with 30 pound floating braid and a 50 pound armor cord leader. And that's really, really important. 50 pound armor cord, one, it's very, very strong to take the force of the cast, but also it's quite thick. And that means that this bit on the end doesn't tangle when I cast it out. Some people experience this lot tangling on the cast. So let's just put this down and show you what happens if you don't cast it hard enough. What happened, because that's a big float, obviously it's very buoyant, which is a big advantage, but because it is a big float, it pushes back up the line and then can do that on the cast and then it locks itself in position and it won't come up. So by casting it harder and lower, it keeps the whole thing together and then it won't tangle on the cast. And that 50 pound armor cord really helps that. And to talk to you about the float system itself, so we've got the drop zone marker float there, great big flight on the top of it, which is really important. At long range, small marker floats are really difficult to see. That helps a great deal. And now you can buy separate flights for this. So you can get black flights and replacement orange flights as well. If the light conditions like we've got today, it's very bright out there, a black float would be perfect. When the light starts to drop, then you want to have a lighter coloured float on. So one of the orange ones will stand out better. And then I've got the bead that comes in the pack with the float. And then also one of those stems that just keeps everything up off the bottom, keeps it away from weed and stuff. And I actually think it casts better with the stem. And then on the end of the stem, this time I've put a four ounce distance lead that I've just cut the swivel off of. And then that's just on there with one of our stick clips. And then over the top of that, I've got a helicopter sleeve that just neatens everything up, keeps it all nice and tight together, stops anything tangling. So that's the marker float setup. Obviously I'm not using a marker on this particular session because on the hall there are markers out in the lake already for you to aim at. So this is what I would use if I was gonna start a session and I didn't know where I'd be fishing. A week long session like this, I'd find a spot first and just concentrate on that spot over the course of the week and get the bites coming. Now let's talk about actually baiting up. This is my long range spot setup. So let's go to the front of the swim and I'll talk you through long range spotting. Again, the rod is the most important thing as it is with any casting. This is a Longbow DF long range spot. This came from a day where we went out to one of the Japanese rod builders, showed him what long range spotting was, and he designed this fella. And this is proper pokey, this one. Over five pound test curve, but you need it when you're fishing a long way out. Big rings again, all the way down it. That's really, really important. And a long handle as well, built exactly the same as the longbow fishing rod. So it looks really smart as well, but it does the job. And that is so important. I see most people, the cheapest rod is their spod rod and they wonder why they can't get the distance. It's so important to have something that's got the backbone in it and we'll put that spot out a long way. This is the Daiwa Emblem Spod Reel, made for the job, great big spool on it, a really kind line clip. That's really important if you can see that there. That's what we're putting the line under to stop the spot at exactly the right distance. And that's loaded with 30 pound Daiwa Tournament Braid. Absolutely brilliant stuff this, thin as cotton, really, really strong, 
goes off the spool brilliantly, but you have got to respect it. So keep splashing it with water while you're spotting, and that will stop too many loops coming off together and causing what we call braid carnage. And that's attached to a 30 pound armor cord leader. Not the 50 that I'm using on the marker setup. 30 is more than strong enough for me. The most important thing, if you can see just above the reel there, joining the two together with a four turn water knot creates a tiny, tiny knot and that never catches on the rings at all. So that's a perfectly balanced setup. And if I combine that with one of our Sky Raider spods, that's tapered towards the back, really buoyant nose cone on it, but all of the weight is in the front of the spod and that's really important. That makes it fly true and really long. It's a little bit lighter than the Skyliner spod, which was our original one, a little bit smaller surface area, and that's what makes it go further. And then there's one of these called a Skywinder, which has got no holes right up to the fins. And that's for if you're putting boilies out, you'd fill it with boilies, then dunk it in the water, fill it with water to stop the boilies coming out. And that's what I would use in that situation or if I'm fishing with maggots. But in this situation, we're fishing a particle mix. So I'm scooping up sort of to the top of the spod, pressing it down with my thumb. So it's all compressed into the bottom end of the spod. That's really important. Stops it wobbling about in flight and then out she goes. And then the technique for spotting, you want to be moving your body. First of all, your weight starts on your back foot. So the, your, the tip of your toe, there's almost no weight on at all. Your arms are fully extended and you're really gripping the end of the rod with your left hand, if, if you're right handed. The rod's as far back as you can get it. So it's almost level. The spot's almost dragging along the floor. And as you come through, the weight transfers onto your front foot you're pulling with that left hand as much as you can and punching the spot out there. That's really important to get movement of the body. So you start off on the back foot and go through into the front foot. If you're just casting with the top half of your body, you're never gonna get as far. And make sure those arms are fully extended right up in the air and the rod tip is as far back as you can get it. So the rod is level, if anything, pointing slightly backwards. The spot should just be skirting the floor and then you come through all the power, pushing your body weight through onto the front foot as well. And if you're going straight overhead, the spot should go lovely and straight. Obviously we've got a bit of a crosswind today, so I'll be heading into it a little bit and then getting the spot just to fade over and go close to that pole. So, so let's get into that. We've got both our buckets here in front of us. That's really important. I'm just scooping up to the top of the spot, squeezing it down with my thumb, as I say, that just gets the excess off. And then roughly half the length of the rod. That's what how far the spot should be dropping down. Got my nice neoprene finger stall on. The weight goes onto my back foot. Rod tip all the way back and then out. Dink. That's just hit the clip at 130 yards. And if you keep practicing, keep practicing, you'll get it to go just as far as that. It's just technique and having the right kit. If I can do it, you can do it.